Today I'm going to explain a American drama film. Titled Gifted. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and enjoy. Frank is trying to get his niece Mary to come out of the bathroom. She is not fond of the outfit, she has to wear for what is to be her first day of school. Frank and Mary live in a small home with their one-eyed cat Fred. Frank then goes to drop Mary off at the bus stop. After she's gone, Frank is spotted by his neighbor Roberta. Roberta follows Frank into his house and tells him that he needs to do something for Mary or else he will lose her. Now, Mary begins her first day of first grade in math class taught by Miss Bonnie Stevenson. Bonnie asks basic math questions, like 1 plus 1, 2 plus 2, but Mary is displeased, since she knows more advanced math than the rest of the class. So teacher then asks some tough multiplication problem to her, but Mary solves every multiplication problem on her own and even states the square root of the number. Later, Principal Davis enters the classroom, and Mary shouts at her to call Frank and get her out of the class. After school, Frank picks Mary up. Bonnie runs outside to catch him and discuss Mary's incredible knowledge of math. Frank says that Mary studied the Trachtenberg method, that allow herself to memorize equations and arithmetic computations. Bonnie later looks up the Trachtenberg method to see what Frank was talking about. She also find up Mary's mom Diane, who was a brilliant mathematician until, she committed suicide when Mary was only six months old. Frank takes Mary out for a day at the beach on a boat, while also lecturing her on why she shouldn't have yelled at the principal. Mary does appear to show remorse. Later, Frank goes to a bar, he visits every Friday night, and finds Bonnie coming in to and approach him. She confronts Frank about why he did not tell her truth about Mary. Frank explains how Diane came to him one night and he did not realize what she would do later. He found Diane on the bathroom floor, and has had Mary ever since. Next day, Mary is on the school bus and sees her classmate Justin walking with a zoo diorama that Mary finds better than the one she made. Another kid named Ricky trips Justin and causes him to break his diorama, mocking the poor boy in front of the other kids. Mary yells at Ricky for what he did, and when he asks what she'll do, Mary grabs a textbook from another kid and whacks Ricky in the face, breaking his nose, leading to blood. Frank is called in school, after the incident. Principal Davis considers expelling Mary, but then suggests granting her a scholarship to attend the Oaks Academy for Gifted Education, as someone with Mary's intellect would be more suited for that environment. However, Frank refuses to allow it, feeling that Mary needs a normal education and childhood. Mary later apologizes to her class for hitting Ricky, but then takes the opportunity to mention how great Justin's diorama was. Leading the class to applaud the boy. Frank and Mary receive an unexpected visit from Frank's estranged mother Evelyn. She gives Mary a laptop as a gift for better education. Evelyn then takes the time to criticize Frank's living arrangements, and Mary's form of education, which doesn't surprise Frank. She claims she is looking out for Mary's best interest, and asks Frank what Diane would think if she saw how Mary lives now. Evelyn wants to take Mary and give her the best education, so she can get to put more potential in her future. But Frank disagree with her. As a result, Frank and Evelyn become involved in a custody battle. Evelyn brings her lawyer Aubrey Highsmith. While Frank is represented by Greg Cullen. Highsmith argues that Frank illegally gained custody of Mary, while Cullen defends Frank's living conditions. It is settled that Frank and Mary will be checked, on while Evelyn will have some time to herself with Mary. Later, Frank leaves Mary with Roberta, for the evening while he goes out for drinks with Bonnie. They eventually hook up, although Bonnie is initially hesitant. The two sleep together. Next morning, Mary unexpectedly goes over to her house, while Bonnie is there wrapped in a bed sheet. Mary catches her, and Bonnie leaves extremely embarrassed. Frank scolds Mary for leaving Roberta's home when she wasn't supposed to, so Mary thinks Frank can't have a personal life because of her. Later, Evelyn takes Mary to Boston as per court's permission. She shows Mary, pictures of Diane, and tells her about Diane's research into the Navier Stokes problem, which Diane had devoted her life to. Next day, Evelyn takes Mary to meet her colleague, Seymour Shanklin to review an equation he tried to solve. Mary appears confused by Shanklin's work, which he dismisses as her simply not being able to comprehend just yet. As Evelyn takes Mary away, Mary states that she was confused because Shanklin's equation was wrong. Evelyn takes her back to Shanklin. Mary corrects the equation, and resolves whole problem by herself. The professor then asks why she doesn't tell him earlier. Mary answered that Frank taught her not to correct elders. Meanwhile, back in Tampa, Mary comes back. Mary starts seeing a psychologist named Pat. 
Pat learns much about Mary's life, including that she has no friends of same age, and that she sees 40 years Roberta as her closest friend. Pat appears concerned when Mary mentions that she and Roberta watch UFC fights every week. During the next court's hearing, Mary's biological father Pollard testifies on behalf of Evelyn. Cullen presses Pollard over his non-involvement in Mary's life, not even being able to know her middle name. The judge rules against Pollard for any sort of custody. When Mary learns that her father was around, she breaks down in tears over him, not even bothering to visit her. To cheer her up, Frank and Roberta take Mary to the hospital to see a family gathered as they await the birth of a new child. When they learn that a boy has been born, the family cheers. Frank tells Mary that this is what it was like when she was born, and it was he that stepped out to deliver the news. Mary also enjoys the feeling. Later, Frank and Evelyn return to court. Highsmith grills Frank as he testifies regarding his current job, doing freelance boat repairs. When he used to have a job as an assistant professor at Boston University, as well as a previous arrested for assaulting. Highsmith continues to insist that Frank is depriving Mary of a potentially fruitful future. Cullen in turn presses Evelyn about the circumstances surrounding Diane's passing. Cullen later goes to Frank's home, and tells him that he and the judge have come to an agreement, where Mary would be placed in foster care until the age of 12, when she can decide where to live. Out of fear that they will lose the case and Frank would lose full custody of Mary. Cullen urges Frank to take the deal. Frank meets the foster parents, and sees that they have a nice home and family. He leaves Mary there. And they have a tearful goodbye, where Mary begs Frank not to leave her. Frank must regrettably walk away even as Mary cries and screams for him. After a while, when Frank tries to visit Mary, the foster father tells him that she doesn't want to see Frank. And Frank returns, handing Mary's new father the gift. Next day, Bonnie comes across a flyer for a missing cat, Fred. She sends the picture to Frank, who suddenly goes to the animal shelter, as he seems to know what is going on. The receptionist informs him that it was brought here by a lady, who had allergy to it. Frank get Fred back, he know that Evelyn is the one, because she is allergic to cats. Frank goes to the foster family's home, and finds out Evelyn is staying in the guest home and has two tutors present for Mary. Although Mary is initially angry to see Frank and runs out, Frank follows her and apologizes her, Mary then sobs and says, she was unfortunate when they took Fred away. But Frank assures her that he found Fred and it's okay at home. She breaks down and hugs him. Frank then goes to Evelyn and presents her with something she had never known of before, Diane's completed work on the Navir Stokes problem. Evelyn thinks it's fake and that Diane would have wanted it published soon. Frank reveals that Diane had requested not to have the work published, before Evelyn's death. This hits her quite hard. Frank says he will have the work published on the condition that Evelyn give up custody of Mary to Frank, otherwise the work will remain unpublished until Evelyn dies. Frank then gives Diane's solution to Evelyn, and take Mary with him. After which Frank, Roberta and Mary drive back home. Evelyn breaks down in tears, and then calls Shankland, the professor. Mary then enroll at MIT to study higher level mathematics as per her interest. Frank picks her up and brings her to the park, to join with Bonnie and the other students of her age. And the movie completes here. Thanks for watching.